Some Coloradans were treated to a pretty rare sight last night, the Aurora Borealis. Yeah, if you missed the northern lights coming all the way down to Colorado last night or over the last month, you should be getting more chances. And meteorologist Chris Bianchi is here to explain. And one thing I've always wondered is, Why'd they name it after Aurora? <laughs> I know. Yeah, how did that happen, it, right? It's named over the east side of the city, slightly, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's, it, it, it is stunning. And by the yeah. way, we would have seen the Aurora Borealis last night if we had not had cloud cover. Yeah. So it was stunning because Colorado Springs, uh, much of Northeast Colorado got a pretty spectacular show last wow. night. But I do have some good news if you missed it last night. That said, it is pretty rare to see the Aurora Borealis as far south as Colorado, including the city of Aurora. It obviously happens, mm -hmm. but uh, you need a really big solar storm for it to happen here in Colorado. So here's a look at it. And the Aurora Borealis is caused by solar particles carried by the solar wind interacting with the Earth's atmosphere. Let me simplify that. It's caused by solar storms. Now the strength of those storms ebb and flow on a roughly 11 year cycle. And we're entering a solar maximum that is expected to peak in the middle of 2025. It is 2023, so as a reminder, that is two years from now. So that should give us a few more chances to catch those northern lights in the next few years. So the good news is, if you missed it last night, there will probably be more chances to see the Aurora Borealis in the next few years, and that includes us here in Colorado, and we're pretty far south to get those northern lights. So are they predictable? Because you're talking about the sun. This is a solar storm. It's happening way up there at the sun. Do we know when it is possible or when it's coming, if you will? Yeah, and, and it's about a month out that you can get a decent idea about these solar storms. Again, it, it's the strength of these solar storms that come off of the uh, off the sun, which is our nearest star, and how they interact with our Earth's atmosphere determines the strength of the Aurora Borealis. So, Kim and Tom, the good news is we can predict those a couple days in advance, usually uh, get a pretty good idea about three, four weeks out when we're getting a pretty good solar event. We don't really have any great ones upcoming over the next couple of weeks, but as I mentioned, in the next few years, we're probably going to get a decent Aurora Borealis show. Dust, dawn, look yeah. north, that sort of thing. Yeah, and general idea, get away from the city, go as far north as possible, uh, usually up into Wyoming, north of Cheyenne. Uh, you get on up by Chugwater, Wyoming. It's about two, three hours drive, and that's where you'll probably get the best views. Which, which so street on Chugwater? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's uh, Main. Main Street in Chugwater. Main Street in Chugwater. Last night it was fun, though, because everybody was sending in these cool pictures. Yeah. And like, we missed out. <laughs> but it was cloudy, and, you know, and it is the city lights makes a difference. And if those clouds had cleared about two hours earlier, we would have had a pretty spectacular Amazing. show. So, came close. Darn it. Blame it on the weather. I know. I know. Well, we'll listen for that forecast yeah. for the next we'll solar storm. Yeah, okay. sure. Thanks, Chris.